So not too long ago, I checked out the popular Magic 468 mechanical keyboard. I really like it and I definitely think it's one of the top budget boards out there. Although one of my personal gripes was the somewhat large Magic Force logo above the directional arrow keys. It's always just been something that I've disliked on any keyboard as I prefer it just to be blank in that area. So to try and mend that problem, I'm going to cover it with a decal. I've seen a couple of people do it but the last I saw was on the mechanical keyboard subreddit and this guy used the sweet MacBook vinyl to cover his backplate. And I thought that it looked really cool so I decided to try it for myself. This is super easy since I'm not wrapping the keyboard but just covering a flat surface. But by doing this I'm technically making it less clean but in a sense more uniform in design but if you wanted something more cleaner then there's a ton of other vinyls around. But yeah I wanted some sort of picture or artwork to make it a bit more interesting and I couldn't find a MacBook vinyl that was big enough and that I liked. But I finally came across this and many of you will know it since it's a very famous Japanese artwork and it's the Great Wave of Kanagawa. The best size I could get was in A3 so that's one of the downsides to this as I'll only be able to show off half of the artwork but on the flip side I can use it for two keyboards or even three. So something like a pattern would work better in this regard. The ideal scenario for this would be working with a DIY mechanical keyboard kit so we can have the plate by itself with no switches attached. This would make it really easy to just whack it on top and cut out all the holes from there. But since the switches are already on, we could technically do that as well by removing all the key switches, but that's way too much work. So I'm going to print out all the cutouts and cut it before placing it. The Magic Force is pretty much standard in terms of layout, except for a couple of those keys on the right hand side. For this, I'm going to just use Illustrator and I just grabbed an image of a mechanical keyboard plate of Google Images. I cut off all the unnecessary keys at the top and on the right hand side of the board and I took a couple of measurements of the keyboard and made it to scale. There were only a few adjustments to make. The 4 key nav cluster was slightly in more so those had to be moved a tiny bit along with the directional arrow keys. And then just to give myself a bit more space I drew in larger holes for the key switches I also drew in some different radius curves in the corners to see how they fit. But before I do the real thing, first I had to test it on a piece of paper. I have an A3 printer so I was able to do a single print, but it can easily be done by joining two prints together if you're working with A4. This is just a test piece so my cutting isn't careful and precise. A utility knife is sharp enough for this job but the sharper the blade is, the neater the actual job will be. And the test piece actually looks to fit pretty well. The sides are a touch too far out so they'll be brought in a little bit. But everything else seems to be fitting pretty good. The gaps between each key could be increased but to make it easier and to give myself more space I'll just leave it as it is. Especially since when you put on the keycaps it's pretty much covered anyway. Another thing I was concerned about was the actual logo I'm trying to cover up. Since it's like embossed it might impact on the decal surface. So to check how it goes I just use a label sticker which is thinner than the vinyl and there was pretty much no effect so the thicker vinyl will for sure be absolutely fine. So here's my final drawing, I'll leave a download link in the description if anyone actually wants it but I pretty much adjusted everything to fit and it should work well. I used a 0.5 stroke thickness for the line so it's pretty thin and I also mirrored it underneath since I'm going to be printing it onto the back of the vinyl sheet. This is just one possible way. I guess you could just print it on a piece of paper and use it as an overlay to cut through. Since I have an A3 inject printer I can do this. I'm not sure how this would react to a laser printer since it might melt the adhesive or something. So yeah probably just go with a safer overlay method. The vinyl is slightly larger than A3 so I cut it down a bit to fit my printer. It's also really important to figure out the orientation of the piece so it's not upside down or anything when you print it out. To make sure I get the cleanest cut possible, I'm using a brand new blade and a craft knife is also just easier to hold and control and is just more comfortable to use. And now it's just a matter of cutting all these holes out. It's best to just be patient and go slowly and it also helps to use a steel ruler so the blade doesn't dig into it. 
Unfortunately, with the smooth finish on the back of the vinyl sheet, the ink didn't really adhere well to it, so it does smudge when you touch it. I took it really slowly with the first few cuts, especially with the spacebar, which is the only non-rectangular cut. Since it was smudging a bit, it was kind of difficult to see where to cut, so it helped to just plot a few dots on there so I can line everything up. I gradually got faster and faster, and overall it took less than an hour, so not really that long. And here it is all cut up, and it looks really sweet with no major mistakes. Before sticking it on, make sure that the surface is completely clean, and I just lined everything up and stuck it on. And I'm really pleased with the fit, I'm happy that I gave myself some room around the keys since I did have to shift it towards the left a little bit. I feel like I was a bit too safe with the left and right edges, so there's a bit more metal showing there but the top and bottom edges come pretty close to the shiny chamfered edges, so I'm pretty happy with that. My spacebar stabilizer holes weren't correct as well. I'm not sure why I got that wrong, but it does hit the top of the stabilizers. It is fine and won't be seen at all with the spacebar on, but overall the fit is pretty decent. And putting the keycaps back on, the whole thing actually looks pretty good. I didn't know exactly how it would turn out, but it seems to suit the Magic Force really well. Being a floating key design, it allows the vinyl to be seen more, but at the same time, all the slight misalignments and gaps are easily hidden by the keycaps, so all that's shown is the artwork when you look in between the keycaps, so it gives the illusion that it's been done very well. And of course to the main area I was trying to cover up. This is the largest exposed area right above the arrow keys, and I think it looks perfect and I, I couldn't be any happier with how it looks. The Magic Force logo can't be seen at all, and it also helps that the vinyl is somewhat thick, but it's also slightly textured. Being textured and matte, it gives a very clean look. With the LEDs on, it does help illuminate the artwork underneath. When it's off, the keycaps also act like a shade, so it does block the light from shining onto the surface, so the lighting does bring it out a bit more. If you have the white LED version of the Magic Force, then I think that would look quite a bit better and also much cleaner. So once again, if you want to give it a go, I'll have the drawings in the description. I fixed it up slightly to account for the spacebar stabs and the side edges and stuff, but you can modify it if you want to adapt it to other keyboards or something. And I'm just really happy with it, it surprisingly looks pretty cool and it's super easy as well so anyone can do it. And it will also do absolutely no damage to your keyboard.